assessing the reliability of a study or a measure is a two-step process. First you need to choose a statistic to quantify reliability and then you need to interpret the specific value of that statistic that you calculated from your sample. In this video I'll talk about the choice of a reliability coefficient or, or how to choose a statistic that you apply to estimate reliability. Reliability uh, concerns uh, the variation of true score divided by the variation of, this, of the scale score or variation of the, to the total variation. And reliability can be understood on an, an item level or on a scale score level. And in this video I'll focus on the scale score level. I'm also focused on, on internal consistency reliability. So reliability comes in different forms. We have our test retest reliability which evaluates the stability of, of a measure and then we have these internal consistency measures that evaluate the equivalence of different measures. So we are focusing here on, on scenarios or techniques that are applicable when you have a single measurement location and you have multiple measurement items from that single location. And then we look at if those items are highly correlated, if so, then they may be reliable. So these are the basics. Let's take a look at example and uh, we need to understand the concept of a true score a bit better to understand some of the reliability coefficients. And this is an example of um, a hypothetical survey instrument or, or a scale contains three questions. All three of these questions are supposed to measure company innovativeness. And um, the true score of these items is defined as the long run average of these items measured from a specific individual. So if we have a specific individual, we would ask them uh, to rate our firm is very innovative. Then we would brainwash the individual so that the individual would not remember that they actually answered the question before. Then we would ask the same question immediately again so that there's very little time delay and we re repeat this brainwashing and asking, brainwashing and asking many, many times. And then we get, uh, we take an average of those measures and that is our true score. The idea why it's a true score is that because we assume that the measurement measured score x is a function of true score and random noise, then in, in large number of replications of the measurement process, the random noise, different, uh, different instances of the random noise cancel out each other and what is left in the mean is just the true score. The true scores for these three items are T1, T2 and T3. And one of the important things that we need to ask ourselves when we choose a reliability coefficient is are these true scores the same? They are, if the true scores are the same, then the scale is referred to as being tau equivalent. The tau here refers to the, the Greek letter tau, which is sometimes uh, used to, to indicate the true score. So it's, it's like Greek T and equivalent of course means that our two things are the same. So are these the same? There are reasons to believe that they probably would not be the same in this case. For example, if you have a, a highly innovative company, then uh, a person would probably agree that the company is highly innovative. But for if the innovativeness of that company would be uh, more about efficiency and, and processes instead of new products and services, then a person may, might actually disagree with this item. So you may have a, a a company that is highly innovative but nevertheless uh, the person would disagree with the new product concepts item. So that would mean that the true scores between these two items will not be the same. It's also possible that there would be some dimensionality in these scales. Of course this is the three items so we can't estimate any multidimensional model. But it's conceptually possible that for example these two items x2 and x3 would be more correlated with one another than, than x1 because they are um, are more, more uh, concrete. This is uh, fairly abstract. So these are, are easier to evaluate. This is more like uh, a subjective uh, opinion, less objective. So that's another reason why the true scores may not be the same. If the true scores are the same, then we can just use coefficient alpha. But if they're not the same, then we actually need to uh, pick another reliability coefficient. So we're going to be looking at internal consistent reliability coefficients and um, 
before we go into uh, detail in these coefficients, it's useful to, uh, to check what exactly a reliability coefficient quantifies. So these coefficients are applicable to multiple item scales. So you need multiple items and then we uh, calculate correlation between the items and that correlation gives us the correlation matrix quantifies internal consistency. How much the items correlate with one another. We have uh, the measured score consists of true score and an error score. Then we calculate the scale score. So I'm using capital X to signify the, uh, the sum of these individual indicators X and, and that sum is our scale score. And reliability coefficients quantify the variance of the true scores of the scale score for different individuals divided by the variation of the scale scores for different individuals. So how much of the scale score variation is due to the true score variation? That is what uh, reliability coefficients quantify. They are not about individual item reliabilities, but they are calculated on the scale level and typically for a sum calculated from that scale. And another way of, of um, calculating the reliability coefficient is to uh, calculate based on, on estimates. So this is variation of estimated true score divided by variation of there are scale scores. We can also calculate it differently. Variation of true scores divided by variation of true scores plus variation of error scores. So that's another way of estimating total variation. And a third way to calculate these reliability coefficients is to calculate the unreliability. So this is variation of error scores, error variations and divided by, by the total variation. And then you subtract that from, from one and that gives you a reliability coefficient. All these coefficients uh, work the same way. So there is uh, there's something divided by something and, and we use one of these three forms depending on which one is more convenient for a particular scenario and, and that gives us a coefficient. They just differ in how the true score variation, error variation or the scale score variation is calculated. One important assumption that all reliability coefficients make is that there are error scores a random noise. So the error variation is random and it is independent of the true scores. Different coefficients make different assumptions in true scores. Tau equivalence assumption made by coefficient alpha means that the true score is the same for each item and then we have uh, other coefficients that relax this assumption in different ways and then they produce different kinds of reliability estimates. So coefficients are differ how the variation of true score and variation of the scale score are calculated and, and that's, that's basically it. Two important things that you need to consider or the two most important assumptions in, in coefficient alpha which is the simplest of these coefficients that I'll address are uh, tau equivalence and unidimensionality. If you have a tau equivalent model then a factor analysis that has all the items loading on, on a single factor indicates a solution for, where the factor loadings are roughly the same and if the factor loadings are, are different so for example 0.5 to 0.8 here then we don't have tau equivalence. Items are not equally reliable or items have different uniqueness or, or however you want to interpret that. So that's the first assumption tau equivalence. Another assumption that is important is unidimensionality and how do you assess unidimensionality if you do an exploratory factor analysis then the uh, unidimensional scale basically means that one factor is sufficient to explain all variation in that scale. If you do confirmatory factor analysis which is a bit more rigorous then a confirmatory factor analysis would show that the factor model fits well. So does a single factor model fit well to a scale? If yes then uh, there is evidence for unidimensionality. So these tau equivalence and unidimensionality are the two things that you need to consider when picking a reliability coefficient. There is a great article by Cho on, on choosing reliability coefficient and, and making reliability reliable that, that summarizes all these various coefficients. And uh, he uh, categorizes these uh, coefficients on, on the dimensionality whether there's unidimensional or multidimensional model that expresses the data and whether there's tau equivalent or congeric congeneric uh, basically means that uh, the items depend on, on the same true score 
but they do so to different extent. So if you have unidimensional and congeneric model, then you have a single factor model that fits well, but the items load on that factor with a different degree. One of the problems in this literature is that these coefficients, they are named rather inconsistently. For example, there is omega coefficient and then there's another coefficient referred to as omega that uh, applies to unidimensional case and multidimensional case. Also, like if we have KR20 or Hoyt's method or coefficients alpha, Kronbach uh, alpha, then those, those don't really, the names don't describe what the coefficients do. And, and this is uh, confusing. Composite reliability here, well all of these are composite reliabilities in, in the sense that they are can quantify the reliability of uh, a sum of the indicators. So why one index should be called composite reliability but not others. So that kind of things. And uh, <coughs> Joe's article uh, advocates that we should uh, use a more systematic approach to these, these coefficients and uh, that's, uh, that would be a very good thing if it would happen. But unfortunately we are just so used to calling uh, tau equivalent reliability as Cronbach's alpha or coefficient alpha that it's unlikely that this more systematic approach that he introduces in the article actually takes hold. These um, split half reliability coefficients are not common. So I'm not going to be addressing split half coefficients. The idea of these split half coefficients is that you take uh, a scale of for example four items, you take two items, you calculate the scale score and you take another two items, you calculate the scale score and then you correlate the scale scores and that quantifies reliability. These are not very commonly used. They used to be uh, common in the early days when calculating other coefficients was uh, more cumbersome but nowadays with computers we can just calculate any of these coefficients in fractions of seconds so calculation is not an issue. Then there is a uh, parallel reliability. I'm not going to be talking about parallel reliability either because that is typically too constrained. Parallel reliability means that there are the same true scores and that the means of the error variances are the same. So uh, in tau equivalent condition we're typically uh, focusing on, on the essential tau equivalent co condition which means that the true scores are the same uh, but they, they can differ in their means and it doesn't really make a difference in this uh, these are coefficients if the means are different because they're not included in, in the correlation matrix. So I'm just going to be focusing on, on these uh, four classes, uh, unidimensional tau equivalent, unidimensional congeneric, multidimensional tau equivalent, multidimensional congeneric. And how do you choose a reliability coefficient and what do the different reliability coefficients actually quantify? There is a, a nice article by, by Dan McNeese in Psychological Method that advocates that people should abandon alpha and uh, use one of these other coefficients instead which he argues are superior. Some of these are superior in, in some ways, some of them are, are inferior in some ways. It's important to understand what these quantify and under which assumptions. Remellers omega total and omega hierarchical are applicable to bifactor models. So when you have multidimensional data, then uh, you should use some of these indicators. Then uh, greatest lower bound, GLB is a special kind of coefficient that does not really uh, make any assumptions about dimensionality of the true scores or the scales, but that's kind of like a worst case estimate of reliability. So it, it gives you an estimate of reliability that almost certainly underestimates the reliability. For example, if you want to uh, apply errors in variables regression analysis, then using the GLB coefficient would be a very bad idea. But sometimes calculating this kind of worst case estimate would be useful. So if a worst case estimate gives you 80% reliability, then you know that well your reliability is probably pretty good. The two important things uh, to consider when choosing uh, coefficients are tau equivalence and unidimensionality. There's another uh, nice article by Cho and Kim and they present this workflow for choosing uh, which reliability coefficient to apply. And the first step is, is, is the scale unidimensional? I'm going to be focusing first on the, scale, on the scenario where the, the answer is true. So with, there's unidimensionality, then we need to check is there a 
tau equivalence. So are the factor loadings of our well-fitting single factor model, are they the same for all items? If yes, we have tau equivalence. If no, then we don't have tau equivalence. If yes, then we use coefficient alpha or tau equivalent reliability as uh, Joe's paper, other paper advocates for the term. If no, then we use our uh, omega total composite reliability or congenerate reliability. These are just different names for the same coefficient. So this is fairly simple. Either you use alpha or you use uh, congenerate reliability depending on the factor loadings. Things get a bit more complicated when we go to the multiple factor models. But let's take a look at what, what alpha quantifies and uh, what the uh, congenerate reliability quantifies. So this is the uh, equation for alpha. And uh, Joe's article basically, uh, this is the, uh, the typical way of, of presenting alpha. So that's the equation from which it's calculated. And Joe's article tells us that this is another more intuitive way of understanding what the formula means. So this formula here is uh, something divided by something. So we have variance of true scores divided by variance of scale score. So we always have the, the true score variation divided by scale score variation or its estimate and that is our reliability statistics. So that is the same idea in all reliability coefficients. So what is the, uh, the numerator? What is the denominator? Well the first uh, the, um, the denominator is a uh, scale score sample variance. So that's just the uh, variance of, of capital X and calculated from the sample. And this is uh, something that, that Cho advocates that we should always use the scale score variance as uh, the total variance just to be consistent. So that the, each indicator uses the same denominator. So they're easier to compare because only the numerator is the difference. Then the numerator is a uh, mean item covariance. And uh, what is the, uh, the idea of, of, the, uh, of the sum of mean item covariances? Well, the idea is that if the um, items are tau equivalent, then uh, the covariance of those items quantifies the true score variance. Because that is the only source of, of covariance, only source of shared variance. And if they are tau equivalent, the items, then the covariances between all the items should be the same in the population. So our best estimate of what is the amount of shared variation between the items is simply the mean of covariances. And that's, that's the logic in coefficient alpha. And then we just uh, take k squared k is the number of indicators because uh, that, that's how you calculate uh, the, um, the variance of, of a sum. There is an important thing to understand of coefficient alpha that leads to other coefficients. It is that if the tau equivalence assumption does not hold, if the true scores are not perfectly correlated so that each item has some level of uniqueness or there are some minor factors uh, beyond the true score that you're interested in or if the items uh, are congeneric so that they depend on the same true score but do so to a different extent, then alpha has been proven to underestimate reliability. And because alpha underestimates reliability when the tau equivalence assumption is not, does not hold, it is sometimes referred to as a lower, lower bound estimate. So if you have unidimensional data and you have a coefficient alpha of, of 0.8, then you know that your reliability is going to be at least 0.8 if tau equivalence does not hold. So if tau equivalence does not hold, then your reliability is actually higher than what alpha indicates. So this is the reason why alpha is uh, referred to as lower bound. But it's, it's not the best lower bound actually, and I'll come to that toward the end of the video. Then we have this case of unidimensional, but not tau equivalent. In this scenario, a single factor model fits well, but the factor loadings are not the same. Magnesi's article recommends uh, omega total and coefficient h in this scenario. And uh, omega total is sometimes known as composite reliability or congenerate reliability. Coefficient h is referred to as maximal reliability. And we're looking at this coefficient first and then we're going to be taking a look at how the maximal reliability coefficient differs from the congenerate reliability. The idea of congenerate reliability is that you uh, estimate the factor loadings. 
So uh, factor loading is an estimate of individual indicator reliability if the single factor model holds. And then we calculate the sum of factor loading squared that quantifies the model implied true variance. So that is the model implied true score variance of the scale score. And then we divide that by uh, the model implied scale score variance which is the, uh, the sum of these uh, true score variance plus the error variances. Another way of calculating the same coefficient is to use uh, the scale score sample variance. So instead of calculating what is the implied covariance, assuming that the model is correctly specified, we can take at the actual variance. If the model is correctly specified, the scale score sample variance and model implied total variance should be about the same. If the model is misspecified, then uh, these two, two quantities will not be the same. Typically we calculate these estimates based on converter factor analysis. So we run a converter factor analysis and then we take the lambdas, we take the, uh, the error term variation and then we calculate using this formula. There are extra sheets for doing that online and then you present the result. So that is composite reliability or congenitive reliability. So what does this, this coefficient h quantify then? Well this is, a, this is kind of like omega total but for optimally weighted items. So the optimal omega total and, and every other or all other coefficients in this video assume that you have a scale score calculated as a sum of items. Coefficient h uses a weighted sum or a weighted mean and those weights are calculated to maximize the reliability in the population. But this coefficient is a bit of problematic and the problem is that your, your estimates of reliability factor loadings, they are just estimates. They are not known correct population values. And if you use a, an estimate of reliability to weight an item, then those items that are overestimated by chance only will be weighted more than those items whose reliability is underestimated. So you are basically giving more weight to positive estimation error of individual item reliabilities than you're giving for negative estimation error. And this uh, weighting process actually produces uh, biased reliability estimates. So this uh, coefficient of uh, age or maximum reliability is positively biased and it's not really clear uh, what would be the, uh, the advantage of calculating a, a weighted sum instead of a sum when you want to uh, quantify reliability. So I, I can't recommend this, this coefficient. You can read more about that argument in our paper in, paper in psychological methods. Okay, so that is um, the, the unidimensional items, unidimensional indices. We have coefficient alpha and we have omega total. Then we have uh, bifactor models, revelous omega total, omega hierarchical, and then we have uh, stratified alpha that Joe recommends, but that's not included in Magnesis paper. And these are for the multidimensional scenario. Let's take a look at what these coefficients do. So a chose paper in 2015 with uh, Kim presents this workflow. You first assess dimensionality. Now we conclude that there is multidimensionality. We need a bifactor model for the data. Single factor model does not fit well. And uh, then we need to choose whether we actually calculate the reliabilities based on the bifactor model or whether we estimate the reliabilities without the, the bifactor model. If we go without the, the bifactor model, then we have stratified alpha, which is sometimes called a multidimensional tau equivalent reliability, or that's the, the term that Cho 2016 recommends. And if we choose to go with a multiple factor model, so we actually estimate the bifactor model, then that gives us various uh, omega coefficients and uh, various factor reliabilities using Cho's terminology. So uh, various variants of omega that assume uh, a bifactor model and uh, these could also be called factor reliabilities which is more a uh, descriptive term. Let's take a look at this scenario first. So <clears throat> we have unidimensionality, there is no unidimensionality and there is no tau equivalent. So, so this is the most general scenario. Here we have in, in Magnesis paper we have Revelas omega total and omega hierarchical. And, and these coefficients are, 
both rely on, on the same factor model. The idea here is that uh, if you calculate these, for example, uh, using the psych package in R, then uh, the reliability coefficient itself or the calculation procedure estimates a bifactor model internally and uh, then it takes the main factor and the minor factors and it produces your reliability estimate. How exactly uh, the bifactor model is estimated is not relevant here but it's useful to understand that this takes care of some of the dimensionality issues in the scale. If you want to have more uh, control in the estimation procedure you can always estimate a bifactor model yourself and then calculate the reliability coefficient using formulas that I'll show uh, in a few slides from now. So how do these uh, Revelos omega total and omega hierarchy level differ? Well the difference is that uh, the similarity is that both of these use scale score sample variance of standardized items. So uh, we, we take the standardized items, we sum the items and then we take a sum, take a variance of, of those sums and that, that is our, our, our denominator. But the numerators are different. Both of those numerators have uh, the general factor variance. So model implied variance by general factor in the standardized metric and then we have uh, in, in Revelous Omega Total we have model implied variance by minor factors. So the difference here is that whether you're interested in um, the variation, the degree of error variation in the data or whether you are interested in the degree to which the, with the main factor, the general factor explained the indicators. So omega hierarchical uh, basically takes the approach that you're only interested in the general factor and the minor factors should go to the uh, item specific error or specific factor error if we want to use that term. So we are not interested in that, that is nuisance variation, that is unreliability and we just are interested in uh, the model implied variance by the general factor. In Revelous Omega Total we are in interested in, in all variation that is systematic between the items. So we just want to uh, evaluate, assess how much of this scale, scale score is uh, random noise and how much is uh, the variation is due to the factors including all the factors. So it depends on, on what quantity you're interested in. I would assume that most researchers uh, consider that this is uh, more in line with the classical test theory assumptions. So a classical test theory defines the random noise as unreliability. But then again this is probably more practical because you are typically uh, interested in understanding how much a one unit dimension latent variable explains the indicators. So perhaps this uh, omega total, omega hierarchical is uh, a more useful coefficient. Generally in management research I haven't seen either of these coefficients used much but they are, they are certainly uh, useful. Now let's take a look at not unidimensional and tau equivalent conditions. So uh, this would be applicable uh, if for some reason you cannot factor analyze your data. That is uh, Cho explains that that's, that's a reason if, if factor analysis does not converge then you can go with this kind of reliability coefficient. That's kind of a, a bad recommendation because in, if a factor analysis does not converge there is typically a reason for non-convergence and when you have a non-convergent solution or inadmissible solution or something like that you should understand the underlying reason because it may indicate another problem in your data or in your model and then when you fix that problem it can fix the reliability coefficient as well. But to be systematic I'm going to cover this coefficient as well. The idea of, of this stratified alpha is that uh, you, you split the scale into dimensions. So if we have a six item scale we know that the first three items have a minor factor and the items four to six have an another minor factor. Then we calculate the coefficient alphas for the first half and the second half of the scale. So those scales, those subscales are unidimensional because they are affected by uh, one single, one minor factor and the general factor. So there's unidimensionality because there are no like, like, like two different factors that affect different sets of, of items. And then you use those coefficient alphas to calculate how much of the, those individual scale scores is, is error variance. And then you sum the error variances 
you divide that by the total variance of the scale and you subtract that from, from uh, one and that gives you a reliability estimate. So you basically split the scale in half, you calculate the unreliability of each uh, split half and then uh, you, you sum the unreliabilities and then, then you divide by the total variation and you subtract from one. That gives you the stratified alpha. This is not very commonly used. And um, what's the problem here is that how would you know that items can be divided into subgroups that are tau equivalent each if you cannot run a factor analysis. And if the reason for using this coefficient is that factor analysis can be applied but you need to do factor analysis to show that its assumptions hold, so what would be the point of, of this uh, factor analysis? This coefficient. So we have scale score sample variance here and we have a variance of, of each sub subgroup and uh, or the error variance of each subgroup and we take a sum we divide. So that's the coefficient. Cho gives uh, this nice table of these different coefficients where uh, he expresses the coefficients in, in more systematic form and all of these forms have are, are of the same form so there's something divided by the scale score total variance. So how these differ is how you uh, do the true score variance. How do you estimate the true score variance of the scale score? And uh, basically uh, he recommends that for, uh, for the, the congeneric case and multidimensional case you apply different kinds of factor analysis model. So you can use bifactor model, correlated factor model or second order factor model depending on which model makes sense for your data. And then you calculate what is the implied variation of, of that factor on the items and then you calculate, take a sum of those implied variances, you apply some covariance algebra and you get this kind of uh, equations and then you pick the one that matches your scenario or your model and that gives you the reliability estimate. So how do you choose a reliability coefficient? It's basically uh, a three-step procedure. First dimensionality with the factor analysis if you have unidimensionality, then does factor analysis, does the uh, tau equivalence hold? If yes, then you use tau equivalent reliability or, or coefficient alpha. If no, then you use congeneric reliability or composite reliability or omega, which are the same. If there is multidimensional data, then you should uh, do a bifactor model, correlated factors model or something like that to model the dimensionality and then calculate your reliability estimate based on the dimensions. Cho also recommends that if a factor analysis ca can be calculated then you can use the, the stratified alpha but that's a bit of a bad recommendation because you should always understand the reason for the difficulty of estimation and then fix the reason instead of, of trying to uh, work around the problem. Of course sometimes that's not possible and in that case uh, the uh, stratified alpha could be useful. Okay, so we have covered these reliability coefficients except the GLB. So the GLB is, is a bit different and uh, the idea of GLB is that it's, it's a worst case estimate and uh, alpha is, is in a way a worst case estimate but the GLB, general, uh, the greatest lower bound has been proven to be a better uh, worst case estimate. So uh, reliability of, uh, is always greater than alpha which means that low, alpha is a lower bound and the greatest lower bound has been proven to be uh, actually uh, always higher than alpha. So in, in large samples this is a better worst case estimate than alpha. So, so what does this equation here quantify? We have in the numerator, in the denominator, we have scale score sample variance as, as always and uh, here on, on the, the denominator and the numerator we got uh, indicator error variances. So we, uh, how we calculate the greatest lower bound is that we basically uh, calculate what is the maximum amount of, of error variance that each indicator can have and then we take those maximums, we take the sum and that gives us the, the, the error variance we divide by some of the scale score variance that gives us the total error variance the theory of total error variance in the scale score we subtract from one and that gives us a reliability coefficient. How exactly these error variances are calculated is uh, beyond this video but the idea is basically that if uh, your items are correlated very highly 
then uh, because errors are assumed to be uncorrelated then uh, we have then we know that the error variance is probably very small. If the items are only weakly correlated then we know that the error variance can be very large and we basically uh, look numerically and we try to find the, uh, the largest possible set of error variances that is still compatible with the observed correlation matrix and that provides us the, the greatest lower bound estimate. In practice uh, this is uh, always greater to alpha but it's difficult to calculate and it's positively biased in small samples. So if your sample size is uh, let's say in, in the thousands or, or close to a thousand then this may, may be a, a, a better coefficient than alpha but if you are in the 200-400 range then uh, this is probably too much positively biased to be useful. I have not seen this actually being used in management research pretty much ever but uh, for completeness it's, uh, useful, it's uh, useful to know that it exists. So to conclude you generally uh, choose among, among these coefficients based on UD dimensionality and, and tau equivalence. You run a factor analysis model if the factor analysis model fits well all factor loadings are equal then you go for the, con, uh, for the tau equivalent reliability or convex alpha or coefficient alpha. If your uh, factor model fits well but the loadings are not equivalent not the same then uh, you choose congenerate reliability or composite reliability. If you have multidimensional data then it's a good idea to calculate uh, a multidimensional model using a factor analysis and then uh, you, you pick one of these, co these formulas based on which fa kind of factor analysis model you, you fit to the data or you develop your own, own formula. It's not, it's not that complicated if you know covariance algebra. One final thing about reliability coefficients is that you don't actually always need one. So you need to consider if reporting one is, is actually necessary. We should avoid reporting unnecessary things. For example, if you do a, a structural regression modeling study where you have structural regression models, you don't actually form scale scores at all. So one could ask what is the relevance of calculating the reliability of a scale score if you never calculate the scale score in your study. In that case reporting uh, the, the raw factor loadings would be more useful because they give uh, more direct information about the reliability of the items themselves than any of these reliability coefficients do.